What do you got for us today, Aaron? Well, we can go in the box. It comes right from the factory. It's about 85 bucks. You can buy it here at the store. Okay. Um, but we'll go through the details of the box and we'll get you started. Sounds good. So we're going to look at the box, just how it would come from us. Yep. And it's 85 bucks. Standard, pretty, pretty standard. It's got the two Kevlar felts. It's got the epoxy resin can, it's got the hardener can, the gloves, the sandpaper that you need, a mixing stick, a cup for mixing it, and a one inch paintbrush. First thing I usually do is get a cardboard platform because you're going to make a mess. And the kit comes with gloves because you don't want to get this stuff on your skin. Yep, you don't want to put it on your skin. Okay, that looks like pretty heavy duty sandpaper. Yep, that's uh, it's probably a 60 grit paper. Okay. So it's very aggressive and you have to be a little bit careful. Um, basically the instructions on, the, on this, they note that you want to be in an area where a lot of uh, either air moving around or you got fans moving around or whatever, because it does smell and it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a strong odor. So outside or in a shop that's well ventilated. Yep, that's a good idea. Step by step instructions. Obviously, you place the canoe upside down in saw horses, which we already have done. Um, it's very, very stable. What we're going to do is we already thoroughly cleaned the hull. You can use acetone or you can use um, any kind of basic cleaner or solvent that will clean it out and not leave any residue. So, what I'm going to do is take my tape measure, a marker, and the bottom of the deck plate, which is right here on the canoe or the gunnel, the bottom of the outside, the out whale, is to mark roughly six inches of was right in here. So you can take that mark and go ahead and mark that area so your skid is going to start from here and wrap around the hull. So that gives you a general idea of where to sand. So we'll just take this felt pad, we'll take our marker, and mark Take the skinny end of the pad. We'll go to generally where that mark is. Lay out your felt so it's down the center line of the canoe. You kind of have to use your imagination a little bit. The front of it's easier, but the second half is a little bit harder. You just kind of lay that out, and you take your pencil or marker, and you make just little bitty dots as you go around the canoe. And that just marks where that felt pad is going to go. Take your sandpaper and, and, and basically you sand inside and outside the lines just a little bit. It should be rough enough to the point where the outer layer is worn off, but you don't want to sand down to actually the, the core of the canoe. You don't want to go down to white. You just want to make it so it adheres to the canoe. We'll just get a, you know. Yep. You can see how I move, move way up. I don't like it down here. Yeah. You got to have it higher than where your six inch mark is, but the likelihood of if you're running into stuff way in here, which is six, seven, eight inches. Yeah. then you're really banging into some rocks. So where it's going to do the most good is here and back up to there. So we're only doing one side right now and we're just going to mix half. We're not going to dump them both completely in there, right? Right. Okay. Once these two get together and you mix them, what's the cure time? Uh, it depends upon the humidity and if you're doing it in the sunlight and your temperature. Okay. If you start out with cooler resin you have more time to work. Okay so kind of like your standard two-part epoxy you might use to fix something at home. Just yep. a lot more of it. Exactly. It's very very user-friendly. It's not very difficult at all. 
you don't have a lot of time but we want to show you the stuff so you can read the instructions from now on you know obviously pouring and then brushing works a little easier this is why you want to have uh, some cardboard and don't be afraid of this stuff Aaron's going pretty fast here want to make sure that it gets well saturated well saturated yep. if you notice the color changes on the pad it starts from a really bright yellow and it's going to go to a dark yellow coloration that way you know that you have one side of the pad is completely saturated and you want to get them pretty wet so don't be shy As you can see, the color is pretty well soaked. It's like a wet towel. Take her all the way to the edges because that you don't want your edges sticking up. You know, so when they say saturated, they mean just that, the whole thing. You got gloves on you while you're doing this, so and you flip it over and do the same thing on the opposite side. It's gonna and then it's gonna really, really start to turn color. And get very dark and then you know you got it just like a, a towel at home when it's all pretty well soaked you take your pad and you go over to the area that you sanded and you very gently look at your center line again put it right down the boat and just let it down and you can use your gloves to manipulate the pad a little bit Kind of lay it out, and this is the reason for the gloves. Is you don't have to worry about getting the epoxy on your fingers. You're gonna get right in there and smooth out all the get all the bumps, the air pockets out. Yep. Any dirt that you may accumulate or pick up, and kind of wipe her smooth, because then they'll turn out to be a smoother project. This is the part of your boat that's knifing through the water. The smoother so. it is, the better it'll be, more efficient. Now you take the last of your epoxy. What I usually do is put one more small layer over the top. Just a very small little bit. You want to use up what you've got mixed. That's always a good thing to, to use as much as you can. And then what I do, one little tip is I'll take my brush and I'll go along the edge because you sanded that little bit, is go with the brush width right around that skid. And that helps kind of clean it up and make it look, look a little more professional because you've already sanded that section. Not that it's gonna get perfect, because you're going to scratch it the first day you take it out anyways. But just kind of quickly go with your... And you place that aside. And you go ahead and once again, any ridges, any bubbles, and you can take that felt and kind of lay it down so it's smoother. Because even with kids or anybody around, it can create a sharper edge, which you don't want. Because when it dries, it's going to dry hard. Yep. Kind of lay it down, make it sharp and smooth. The last thing I do is I look at the center line, make sure I got it fairly straight. Got a little part I can come over, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not furniture, it's just a canoe. You want it to get as straight as possible. And that looks pretty good. What do you think, Tim? Yeah, looks great. All right. It's not a long project, and it's very simple to do. I've been working on canoes for 15, 16 years, but this is a fast and easy project to do at home. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you.